What motivates a person to defy evil and choose to act for the good of strangers? James compares and contrasts the consequences of using wisdom for righteousness or for evil. As we look to the wisdom that James teaches us, let us remember the right relationship between faith and works, that in the life of the Christian they are distinct but inseparable. And that brings us to our key Bible verse for today, which reads, But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. James chapter 3, verse 17. James begins with a rhetorical challenge, asking who is wise among his audience. Rather than condemning or refuting their claim, James challenges them to prove it through their conduct. This directive is aimed at the would-be teachers addressed earlier in chapter 3, verse 1. Here James is inquiring whether or not they have the wisdom to match their claim to be practical teachers. Note his question, asking for someone both wise and understanding. James, if such persons are present, James challenges them to show it by their conversation, i.e. their conduct, walk, and excellent manner of life. James now sets forth two possible paths for the way forward, a negative and a positive. The first is a path to shun. Bitter envy can best be characterized as jealousy, which will lead to strife. James says those who possess heavenly wisdom will be pure. This means it is devoid of ulterior motives and self-interest. The next characteristic is peaceable. The root word is peace, which implies that this wisdom or its owner promotes peace. It has the Hebrew shalom in purview and references a well-being that emanates from knowing all is well with God, and he is our friend. Such vertical connections naturally have horizontal dimensions that enrich and empower the possessor's interpersonal relationships. James further lists the characteristics of gentleness, or equitableness, charity given, mercy, fruitfulness in the faith, fairness, and sincerity. James tells his audience they must be patient for the coming of the Lord, that is, the second advent. Apparently, then, like now, there are those who were restless about an apparent delay in the advent, especially in the face of the unjust practices of the rich. These rich are prospering despite their unjust behaviors, unholy actions, and murderous practices. But verse 5 predicts their impending judgment. Christians should thus be patient, for the reign of terror by the rich and their instigator, Satan, might be long, but won't be forever. The wicked shall not reign forever over God's people. Their demise is coming. In the meantime, we must be patient. The brethren were groaning against each other regarding the problems. A common human propensity in stressful times is to turn on each other. James implores them to stop and gives them the purpose for his call, so they are not condemned. This call is reminiscent of Jesus' warning not to judge because we would be judged by the same measure in Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. James gives another reason for his call. The judge is at the door, another reminder that Jesus is coming soon. James follows up with the universal truth that those who endure are considered happy. He then cites the patience of Job, who neither complained nor renounced his faith under severe pressures, and who was richly rewarded thereafter by God. God can be depended upon, for God has pity and is full of mercy. So here's our lesson. The book of James lends itself to application quite easily, as application is the theme of the entire book. Like the book of Proverbs, the book points us to wisdom, the right use of knowledge. When you work, submit each conversation to the test. Ask Am I seeking and encouraging the wisdom from above, or so-called wisdom from below? Are my conversations pure? Do they flow with mercy? Do they yield good fruit? Or do they yield bitterness and anxiety? Asking these questions of ourselves can guide us as we seek the sanctification that only the Holy Spirit can truly offer.